Hi, first graders. It's Ms. Gilmore. I was looking through some of my books and found one that I love. My sister-in-law gave it to me for Christmas a year or two ago. I think so. Anyways, I wanted to read it to you because it's one of my favorite books and I totally forgot about it. Have you ever done that? Like really like something and then totally forget you have it? Well, today we're going to read Gibbs's Adventures in Pet Petlandia. And look, here's Gibbs. He looks just like him. Are you ready? I sure hope so. All right, so I'm going to turn on my document camera so that you guys can read along and look at the pages with me. Otherwise, it wouldn't be too interesting, would it? No, it's not really. All right. Gibbs's Adventures in Petlandia. All right. It's Welcome to Petlandia, a crazy world where any pet can become a star, including yours. From Meow. Mew, York, to Hollywood, Hamster Dam, and Barcelona. This awesome place is the dream destination for starstruck pets everywhere. And here's the dedication page. It says, to Lauren, may this book always be a reminder of how much you and Gibbs adore each other. Merry Christmas, Sid. And Sid is my uh, sister-in-law. Her name is Sydney. Here we go. Gibbs lived in Salisbury and dreamt of being a star with his very own TV show and a chauffeur driven car. No, seriously, it says Salisbury right there. Right there. All right. But being cute and furry made stardom rather tough, especially as the only words he knew were woof and rough. Feeling brave, he folded up his PJs and a flannel along with some ideas for his Gibbs YouTube channel. You believe in me. Sneaking into Lauren's room, he scrawled a doggy note, then kissed her gently on the cheek and went to get his coat. Look, there's his note, it says Lauren. Scampering through the moonlit streets with all thoughts of being wealthy, Gibbs stopped beside a sign and thought, I'll take a selfie. Look, his insta paw. Pulling out his eye bone, he posed and took a snap. Then he headed to the airport while squinting at his map. Oh boy. There we go. All right, I want to make sure I was on the right page. Gibbs was excited because he'd never flown before, unless you count that time he slammed a laptop on his paw. Oh, poor baby. And as soon as the plane took off, he thought of A-list hounds and mutts, and while trying to squish his nose into a teeny bag of nuts. There he is. When Gibbs got to Hollywood, he'd set up several meets, but most of them went wrong because he tinkled on the seats. And even though he tried his best, the top dogs weren't impressed. We've seen your act before, kid, and look at how you've dressed. Look, he peed on the, he peed on the seat, and him is just so sad. Poor baby. With failure after failure, Gibbs's confidence was shrinking. But then he saw a saxophone, which kind of got him thinking. I need to learn some new tricks to really make me shine. And then I'll make some videos and I'll post them all online. Meanwhile, back in Salisbury, Lauren found a note. My dog thinks he'll be famous. Oh, what a silly goat. But suddenly she looked up and saw Gibbs on the news. He'd become an online superstar with 50 million views. Whoa, Gibbsy. You see him? 
MTB here. It seems dogs can't learn new tricks, Lauren thought out loud. And even though she missed her friend, she was also very proud. There was Gibbs on a chat show, tootling away while teeter teetering on a unicycle doing dog ballet. Soon the world was going wild for Gibbs's jolly tunes. You could even buy a storybook and see him in cartoons. He bought a doggy mansion and a limo and a yacht. He even met the president and partied quite a lot. Whoa, look, he's sitting on a pile of gold. Other doggies lined up to shake Gibbs by the paw and scripts for pet-based movies came tumbling through the door. He'd sit and count his money while lounging on his throne. But, oh, there he is, when he wasn't working, he'd often be alone. Because he felt so lonely, Gibbs bought more stuff. But even though he had it all, it was never quite enough. He tried some doggy yoga, which he thought might make him happy, but that just tied him up in knots and made him sore and snappy. Oof. Then suddenly it hit him as he chewed on his oldest bone. What Gibbs wanted most was to be snuggled back at home. Yes, he'd miss his fancy life, the palm trees and his chauffeur, but none of that compared to cuddling Lauren on the sofa. Oops. He called off all his concerts and he gave away his things, but all flights home were fully booked, so he clung on to the wings. Oh boy. Hanging on for dear life as the plane passed, the, as the plane took to the skies, made Gibbs think of Lauren and tears welled up in his eyes. Oh boy. Soaring over Salisbury, Gibbs thought, I've had a hoot, but home is where the heart is, so I need a parachute. Fumbling with his suitcase, he found a sparkly gown, then used it as he leapt off to sort of slow him down. Oh boy, look at that. Tumbling through the fluffy clouds was really quite a rush, but Gibbs had to slow down or soon he'd be doggy mush. Just then he saw a mattress dumped upon a roof, so he steered himself towards it and landed with a woof. Jumping into Lauren's arms, Gibbs cried with joy. Then Lauren squeaked the squeaker and in a squishy, squashy toy. Fame is pretty epic, but snuggles are the best, thought Gibbs as he curled up to enjoy a well-earned rest. Miles away in Hollywood, things were much the same, and countless pets arrived each day to search for wealth and fame. They often spoke about a dog who played the saxophone and how he left it all behind because he missed his home. But Gibbs wasn't bothered that he'd given fame the shove because his trip had taught him that what really counts is love. The 